Hey guys, Uncle Ray. Welcome to another episode of the Crypto Bellwether. On this channel, we cut through the hype and the noise and I give you the non-biased information you can use to hopefully capitalize on the biggest opportunity in history, and that is this current bull run. Now guys, I do my research for me. I have a financial background. I used to work for Bear Stearns. I've been behind the scenes, and I know how those boys navigate. And I've said from day one that the legacy banks, Wall Street, and the governments, primarily the U.S. government, pick winners and losers. And they are going to maintain their dominance, and they are going to control the majority of digital assets, Web3, crypto, and everything else. Now, maybe you disagree, but I don't see how that's not going to happen. But I'm going to dive into what those entities are up to, because one thing I see in crypto is a lot of misinformation, and people only talk about their favorite project. And they said, well, this project's doing this. This project's set up to do that. This project's better for this. Well, that doesn't matter, guys. If I run a bank, right, especially like JP Morgan, why would I want to bring in other people's technology when I can clone it or come up with my own? I already have all the money. I have all the customers. I have the ability to take people to court, right? Like Ripple going to court. I can promise you that the legacy banks like a JP Morgan is behind that. Well, why would you want to use their technology? It's just software like Mr. Wonderful said. Anyway, guys, we're going to dive into what the legacy banks and those entities have as a roadmap and a game plan. And I promise you that this may not make you the most money, but it will save you money in the long run. Because, you know, all the uh, projects like you see on this screen, XRP, Stellar, XDC, Algorand, IOTA, all of those guys have great roadmaps and they're going to get their share. But guys, they are not gaining any ground. They're actually losing ground to the dominant players already. And I'm going to share what those dominant players are doing. And once you understand that, you'll understand the big picture and it'll probably make you uh, buy some other projects. And if nothing else, it'll probably definitely make you take profits because in my opinion holding any project past the bull run outside of bitcoin just has a huge amount of risk because the technology is advancing so fast everything i knew about cross border payments and the banking so called reset two and a half years ago that is not in any way shape or form how things are panning out so we're going to dive into that. So hit that like button and let's get started. Now, a lot of you have probably seen these type charts. Well, I didn't know when I first got into crypto that someone just made this BS up. They literally just made it up and it has zero merit. That is not remotely how banking, the future of banking is going to work. Now, we'll dive into that. Now. I just want to share with you what the power players are up to. And guys, I don't like it either, but it is reality. And we know from the last couple of years, especially since COVID, just how dishonest the 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 governments and Wall Street and everyone is. But anyway, if you go to say JP Morgan's website, you're going to see articles like this. Deposit tokens, which no one talks about, and I'm not going to get into it, but that's just one of their weapons. It says a foundation for stable digital money. Check out this article. JP Morgan Onyx opens infrastructure to disrupt cross border payments. People think, oh, only Ripple or XRP or Stellar and, and uh, Algorand, I thought they were the disruptors. No, guys. They're not disrupting anything. Now, they may have caused things to start to be disrupted, 
but their technology is not cutting edge and I'm going to prove that to you if you stay with me. Now check this out guys and I made videos on this over a year and a half ago and and now I'm starting to understand it more and more but you know I've I've mentioned a hundred times that tokens are not needed. Now some will be used but they're not needed unless we choose to need them. But for the most part, tokens are redundant. And I'll give you an example. I watched a podcast of the CEO of MoneyGram, and he was talking about when they left Ripple to go to Stellar. Well, that got my attention because I, I just, guys, I don't need to be right. I just want to be correct in my thinking. And he didn't say anything bad, but he just said, well, here's the deal. It's redundant. That's why we left XRP. Most people will tell you it's because of the lawsuit. That's not true, according to the CEO. He just said it's redundant. I didn't know what that meant. But then they dove into Stellar and MoneyGram's new partnership. And I'm thinking, well, you know, if if Excel if XRP is redundant, why would you go to basically the same almost technology? And use XLM. Well, guess what? They're not using XLM. They're using Stellar Rails and they're doing all their settlements with USDC. Guys, you got to understand how this stuff really works. But anyway, so that being said, now I understand redundant what he was saying. Think about it Venmo, Cash App. And I know that, well, they are going to get into crypto. PayPal, you don't have to download a token, right? So why would anyone want to own a token to do payments when they don't have to? And if they do, why wouldn't they just use a stable coin that they already own that works like cash, right? Why would anyone want to open up a wallet or a bank account and then have to go buy a third party volatile token to do a transaction that is not the future no matter what people tell you now we all know that tokenized assets are the future and a lot of people think about tokenized assets is like well we're going to tokenize your house you're going to tokenize the bond market they're going to tokenize stocks they're going to tokenize your health records. Everything will be tokenized. But guess what else is going to be tokenized? Your money, right? Your cross-border payment. And that's where atomic settlement comes in. And I'm going to explain that to you and give you an example in a second. But let me read to you what atomic settlement is. This is one of the most touted benefits of distributed ledger technology, which is the future for securities is atomic settlement. This is a the blockchain equivalent of delivery versus payment, DVP. The securities and cash are exchanged simultaneously, preventing either of the parties from being out of pocket in the uh, if the other side defaults. Now that leads to the big problem. And I want you to think about something, guys. This is just common sense. No one. And I mean, no one wants decentralization when it comes to moving real money. Yes, we'll send a thousand, ten thousand dollars decentralized and take our chances. And if it doesn't go through, okay, you just eat it. There's no one to call. But think about it, guys. If you were sending 10 million, 100 million, or a billion dollars to do a transaction to buy a major corporation or to buy a warehouse, or to buy you know property in another country are you really going to just send that decentralized and if it doesn't go through you just deal with it no so here's what it one of the avenues that they're going to use and this may be a stepping stone but atomic settlement to give you an example would be like this if you have a million dollar house that you want to buy and you have the cash well you're going to tokenize your million dollars, right? In a smart contract, it's going to be programmable money. 
And in that program is a just like having a lawyer. It's going to say, well, you can basically cash this token in if this, this, and this, and this happens. Now, on the other side, you're buying a million dollar house. That owner will have the deed, the history, and everything about that house. And it will have stipulations if the money's there, if this is there, if that's there, right? Well, that's atomic settlement. Then those two smart contracts, programmable money, will come into the ledger. The ledger, which will be decentralized, it will process that transaction. Now, that being said, what the legacy banks are working on and the big power players are to make those rails their rails and it will be insured. And if that project doesn't go through, then who are you going to call? You're going to call your banker and they'll make it right. That's the future. Now, one other problem why I'm thinking about it before I get sidetracked that I didn't understand about like cross-border payments. And I learned this from watching, you know, Ripple with David and and Brad, and they talked about this, is the problem with cross-border payments and the reason they're not making the headway that they wanted to with what they try to offer, like Ripple's payments, is because to send money around the world to different countries, to different continents and things like that, the regulation is from place to place to place. Well, they all have different regulations. And so sometime, even though you were going to send money from, you know, America to Asia, well, all those entities may stop it and say, you, you don't have a money transfer license. You literally have to have a license on every entity in the world. So they want to solve that and take that out of uh, the from being an issue. Well, atomic settlement is not sending money. You're sending a token, which is a smart contract, and it gets settled. So therefore, you don't have to have all that regulation compliance. And that is the future, uh, according to the legacy banks. One of the many things, and that may be a stepping stone. Now, let me show you this. Um, again, people don't understand you're going to tokenize the money. But I'm going to show you three charts that they talk about with tokenized assets and cross-border payments. See this chart? It says central banks. It says real estate, uh, shared levers, ledger, private ledgers, e-banking, digital wallet, financial apps, non-financial apps. It basically covers tokenized deposit, tokenized central bank money, tokenized entities. All of that, nowhere on this diagram do you see a cryptocurrency because they're not going to be used and they're not going to be needed. Again, here's one with CDBCs talking about how the uh, legacy banks are going to use unified ledgers. Nowhere is a crypto involved. And I could go on and on and on. See, this is, this is uh, let's see what they're talking about here. This is central banks talking about their RLN applications, which is, I believe that's their regulated liabilities network. I think that's their infra, inner, inner structure. But anyway, no token needed. Now, check this out, guys. And I don't know if I said it before, but the legacy banks and the big power players, which I meant to show, is uh, MasterCard. I think I did show it. MasterCard, JP Morgan, Visa, Swift. They all got together, guys, and they are sticking together. And they're not bringing in any technology that they don't have to. They are not wanting to add people into their circle if they don't have to. Now, check this out. JP Morgan says they're. JPM coin transactions have exploded because of programmability. Guys, they're already doing about $900 billion with the JP Morgan coin, but no one talks about it. 
It is the dominant player when it comes to the flow of money. Now, check this out. This is another uh, avenue there on their roadmap. And again, guys, they're testing this stuff. They are using it, but it shows you they are not using the rails like we thought two years ago. That is old information, old news. It says Singapore is working on a fund tokenized tokenization regulation global layer one. Those banks and all those entities are coming together, spending all their money to build out their own layer one that ties in to all the banks and all their customers and everything they have in place. They are taking Web 2 and moving it into Web 3. And guys, I'm here to tell you, they are gaining ground. Not one crypto foundation like a Ripple or X, uh, uh, XLM or any of them, they are not gaining any ground on uh, taking uh, payments or anything from the legacy banks, whether we want to think that or not. Now, if that's not enough, I'm going to show you how fast this technology is. And I truly believe, guys, that unfortunately, Wall Street and the legacy banks and the governments, their plan is so far down the road. What they're going to do is once they get it there, they're probably going to regulate it that no one else can move into it. But check this announcement that just came out. JP Morgan Chase launches Quantum Secure Crypto Agile Network, revolutionizing financial cyber security. Now, to, to, when you read that article, and guys, I don't understand it because all they use is new terminology. All the stuff I studied to learn about, it's already becoming obsolete. But they talk about using high powered uh, crypto optics that is totally secure. They talk about running nodes, but the legacy banks run those nodes. And yes, a lot of it's going to be decentralized, but it's all going to come back to them. They're going to insure it. They are going to guarantee it. And they're probably going to regulate it. My guess is once they figure out whatever rails and whatever they want, then they will make it law. And then the outsiders can't even compete. But here's my, my point, guys. When it comes to the flow of money, the big money, the billion dollars that's going to be sent, right? Like if Coca-Cola needs to send $500 million to Asia for its new Coca-Cola bottling plant, it's going to call up like the JP Morgan and make it happen. It's not going to be decentralized. And if something happens, their banker will take care of it just like it is now. The world does not want to be sending billions or trillions of dollars decentralized. Someone is going to be liable for the uh-ohs in the world, for whatever that's worth. Now, I know I ran it on, guys, but I really want you to understand the big picture. And that gets back to, you know, I personally invest bull run to bull run outside of my Bitcoin. But to hold any project long term, you got regulation risk. And you got just obsolete technology risk. Guys, just like this quantum technology, so a layer one could come out tomorrow and just totally dominate because of just how safe it is. Who knows what it's going to look like? But guys, the risk is great. Anyway, I know I'm rambling on, but I wanted to bring this uh new information to everyone's attention because there's so much misinformation. But I'm here to tell you guys, and I'm not even going to debate it. If you disagree with me, hey, it's your money. But the legacy banks, the U.S. government and Wall Street are going to dominate crypto. They're definitely wanting to dominate DeFi and staking and stuff like that. And that's what the future is going to look like. They are not losing ground. They are gaining ground. And you got to remember, guys, again, they have all the money. 
They have all the customers and they have all the power. They are not going to lose. I don't care what anyone wants to tell you. All right, that's all I got for you. One other thing, guys, if you need some help with your portfolio, I do one on one coaching. It's only $250 for three phone or Zoom calls. We match up your risk tolerance. We uh, talk about how to dollar cost average out, how to dollar cost average in, how to compare projects, and I answer any question you have. That being said, whether you take me up on that or not, I highly recommend guys get a game plan and work your game plan and take profits or you'll become the profits. All right, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. Share with like minded people and hit that like button. And one other thing, come back and be part of this community. Take care, guys.